In our previous video, we have discussed about bilateral Laplace transform. And mathematically speaking, for a time domain signal x of t, we can have a Laplace transform that is a bilateral Laplace transform x of s minus infinity to infinity x of t e minus s t dt. So we have characterized and analyzed several linear time invariant systems by means of uh, this bilateral Laplace transform. However, do note that we have assumed that the systems were at initial rest. Or we can say that the initial conditions for these systems are zero. But we know that we have several systems uh, which are dependent on initial conditions. So in order to analyze or characterize such systems, we need an alternate definition of Laplace transform and that is something that we call as unilateral Laplace transform. And for unilateral Laplace transforms, we can have systems which have initial conditions. So mathematically speaking, we have X of S, that is the unilateral Laplace transform. The inner argument of integration remains the same, that is we have X of T E minus S T DT. And moreover, the terminating limit of integration is still infinity, but the starting limit is not minus infinity as in the bilateral case, but now we have zero minus. So the integration is starting from zero minus and it is terminating at infinity. So this zero minus is basically something that we come across in terms of uh, the initial conditions. Also note that we have included a zero minus rather than a zero or a zero plus because we can have systems which are having singularities at the origin. So you may have an impulsive function at time zero, right? So we would include from zero minus, we would include this kind of a function. So most of the things that we have studied uh, in bilateral Laplace transform can easily be translated to a unilateral Laplace transform only difference is uh, in terms of the lower limit of integration. An important consideration to note over here is that the lower limit of integration is zero minus. So this means that the unilateral Laplace transform exists for uh, right-sided signals. So since it's starting from zero minus and uh, going towards the right side, so this would mean that the region of convergence is always right-sided for the unilateral Laplace transform. So let us work on a few examples to determine how a unilateral Laplace transform differs from the bilateral Laplace transform and by which way we can find a unilateral Laplace transform. In the first example, we are given with the signal x of t which is equivalent to e minus a t u of t and we are asked to find the unilateral and bilateral uh, transform of the signal. So for unilateral and bilateral, the transform is simply, for unilateral, uh, the lower limit is zero minus, but for the bilateral, it's minus infinity to infinity, and rest of the thing is similar. So let us plug the value of x of t in these two transforms. So we would have 0 minus uh, to infinity the integration e minus a t u of t e minus s t dt. And similarly for the bilateral again we would have I know that we had an x of t over here. So minus infinity to, to infinity e minus a t u of t 
e minus st dt but since we have a unit step function appearing in these two transforms so this unit step function dictates that the integration should start at zero and go beyond zero so this zero minus would change to zero and the integration would be until infinity similarly we have a unit step function over here so the lower limit of integration would start from zero and it goes to infinity and we would have by combining in these two terms so we would have e minus s plus a t dt it would reappear on the bilateral transform as well so these two equalities are exactly the same and hence whenever we have a unit step function the bilateral transform and the unilateral transform they are same because u of t forces the integration to start from zero and go onward so as the solution for these two transforms is simply one over s plus a with real part of s greater than minus a now let us look into the second example that is we have x of t which is equal to e minus a t plus 1 u of t plus 1 and again we are going to find uh, the unilateral and bilateral plus transform so let us first find the unilateral plus transform so we would have x of s equal to 0 minus to infinity e minus a t plus 1 u of t plus 1 e minus s t d t right but right now the unit step function is starting at minus 1 that is this is simply starting from minus 1 and going onward but at the same time the limit of integration is starting from 0 minus from just before 0 so as our unilateral transform would be 0 minus to infinity e minus a t plus 1 e minus s t dt so in the third equality uh, this variable a is not a part of this integration so we can extract it out so we would have e minus a 0 minus to infinity e minus s plus a t dt so this would simply be minus e minus a over s plus a and we would have e minus s plus a where the limits of integration of t are infinity and zero minus so for the last transform to converge this has to be zero when we have infinity so this means that real part of s should be greater than minus a so we would have minus a over s plus a zero that is when real part of s plus a is positive or real part of s is greater than minus a next for the second limit that is we set t equal to 0 minus which is actually 0 just before 0 so if we set t equal to 0 so this whole thing will become 1 right because 0 multiplied by something is 0 and exponential of 0 is 1 so this will be 1 hence we would have e minus a over s plus a with real part of s greater than minus a so this is our unilateral Laplace transform. Now let us look into the bilateral Laplace transform. And for the bilateral Laplace transform, uh, I'm going to use pair six. That is if we have E minus AT U of T 
So this is simply 1 over s plus a with real part of s greater than minus a. That is table 9.2 and pair 6. Next using the time shifting property that is from table 1. So if we are shifting in time that is we have e raised for minus a and t plus 1 also u of t plus 1. So this means that we will be having 1 over s plus a multiplied by exponential with a constant shift in the time that is this t naught which is 1. So this is simply 1 times s. So hence for bilateral we have x of s which is e s times 1 over s plus a. And again the same ROC would be there that is the real part of S is greater than minus A. Now we have both the cases. For bilateral we have E raised to power S whereas in unilateral we have E raised to power minus A. In the third example we are given with one unilateral Laplace transform and we are asked to find the time domain counterpart of the pair that is X of T. So as a first step, we observe that the order of numerator is greater than the order of uh, denominator. So what we can do is we can use the long division and by long division we can simplify uh, the x of s. So we have s square minus 3 and we are dividing it by s plus 2. So simply if we multiply by s we would have s square plus 2s so we would have minus 2s minus 3 so as we can multiply s plus 2 with a minus 2 so we would have minus 2s minus 4 and we would simply be left with 1 so hence uh, the x of s has a simplified expression that is minus 2 plus s plus 1 over s plus 2 and as we can take the inverse Laplace transform but previously when we were taking a bilateral Laplace transform so we were needing the ROC whether it is right sided or left sided but for the unilateral Laplace transform we have mentioned that the R of C is always right sided. So since we have a pole at s equal to minus 2 so R of C would be towards the right of it. Hence the inverse Laplace transform x of t would be equivalent to the inverse Laplace transform of minus 2. Right so for minus 2 now we have simply delta of t then for s this is uh, using table 9.2 pair 15 this is simply u1 of t that is d by dt delta of t and since the r of c is right sided so we can use pair 6 on this 9.2 and hence we would have plus e minus 2t u of t.